one zero one two, and it gives me uh, one thousand two hundred and fifty feet. Texas. Sounds the arrival of the flight from Los Angeles and Chicago. And welcome, everybody, to this uh, Thursday, June 2, uh, 2016 edition of TNZ Talk. I'm Tony Truppiano, a 24-year veteran in talk radio who really does believe he knows something about politics, certainly knows how to opine on it. Joining me, though, is somebody that is more definitive in his views. Uh, the professor himself, writer for the Huffington Post and Liberals Unite, the Z in T and Z, Richard Zombeck. And I think, uh, Z, you've uh, partnered with me because of my voice, not because of my wisdom. <laughs> Well, you know, I I've been I've been feeling kind of kind of badly lately because you've had to give your own little, you know, 24 year experience promo. And that's because I'm too much of a chicken to do the opening dialogue in the morning. And we never get to tell people what you're all about. And uh, you give me a great intro like you do, uh, you know, guests when uh, when you've had shows in the past and. I, f- I feel like you're getting slighted. Uh, I'm not, so you can let that go, number one. Number two, <laughs> yes, you are an opening the show pr- no question about it. Yeah. And uh, if you have to bleep that, well, then you have to bleep that. But, you know, I, 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 I love you. No, I, no, pussy, pussy cat. Uh, you know, listen, it's a, it's a, a, a common term. It's not, it's not one of the seven words you can't say on radio. Or TV. I don't know. Depend depends on what iTunes has to say about that. I don't think they're listening to every show. Hey, speaking of social media, yes, um, I've got a couple things I want to talk about. Uh, one thing really quickly, and then, well, first let's uh, give our information. There we, we go. That's where I thought you that's were right. headed, but go that's for you, it, brother. That's what you thought. That's what you thought the segue was all about. I did, um, and now it is. Yeah, T T N T and Z talk. Dot com, and you can friend us, follow us, uh, give us money, support us. Uh, we'll add you to our list of supporters. And also from TNZTalk.com, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can also contact us. There's a contact link. Get updates to our shows. Uh, email us. Uh, subscribe to our newsletter. And uh, call us. Call us and leave us, a, leave us a voicemail. What's that? What's that number, Tony? That number is area code five five nine, and the number eight nine eight two five five one. That's five five nine T Z Talk one five five nine T Z Talk one. And and that number, by the way, is courtesy of hard work on behalf of Richard Zombeck. Thank you, sir. So the other thing um, relating to social media that I wanted to talk about, and I did put uh, the article up on our Facebook page. I also tweeted it out yesterday. Apparently, there's a setting in in the Facebook app on both iPhone and Android, uh, a little microphone that listens to you. Okay. Constantly. Really? Always. Yeah. Can you turn it off? Yeah. Uh, you can turn it off, and the instructions are in the article. But here's the thing, right? Here's what they're saying, is that when you're searching for stuff or on Facebook, they listen to you, the background noises and your conversation to better determine how to target you with advertising. And it's then I'm sure it's somewhere in an agreement that you agreed to. Yeah, probably. But the thing is, is that it's on all the time. That's scary. And Google has the same little feature, too. If you use the Google app on your Android phone uh, to go, you know, uh, I forget what it is. It's like you say, you know, okay, Google, uh, find me uh, hemorrhoid creams uh, nearby. Uh, the next thing you know, you're going to be inundated with hemorrhoid cream ads. <laughs> okay. Well, I, you know, I do notice, and, you know, the cookies, of course, are the obvious culprit. At least I think they are. Uh, you know, you can, as an example, I was looking to buy slippers. 
and it's much cheaper to buy them online. And so I, this was, you know, whatever, a couple months ago. So I, I went to Amazon.com and bought a pair of slippers. All of a sudden, every freaking website I'm on is showing me an advertisement for what? Slippers. Yeah. yeah. And that drives me nuts. Yeah. But just just wait till you get inundated with, you know, penis lengthening ads and um, well, I just because you were, just, I don't get just because you were curious. I don't get searching for a friend. <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't I don't get um, I don't get those ads um, necessarily on the pages that I uh, go to. But I've noticed that in my spam filter, which I sadly have to check a couple times a day because some of the email that I want to get constantly gets sent to my spam filter. And I don't know why, and I can't seem to stop that from happening. Um, But I'm astounded by the percentage of boner pill emails I get, uh, not to mention uh, uh, psychic readings. Uh, Clairvoyant Clarice is one of the popular ones. Um, And in fact, as we're sitting here, I have 50 items in my spam filter and I just cleared it 20 minutes ago. Proactive, uh, government grants, AIG Direct, insure your car, um, buy a truck, free cell phones. You want me to go on? Uh, no. I didn't think so, but you get my point. And see, I just found one that I wanted or needed. Um, and it's again in my spam filter. And this is somebody that I email with all the time and that I get some of the emails, but not others. I, I just, uh, yeah, I know just one more layer of bull crap to deal with. And, and speaking of bull crap, <clears throat> I think that's a nice segue into Donald Trump uh, oh, yeah. We're going to spend a considerable amount of time on him today. And it's not because we want to. It's because we have to. And, uh, you know, I shared with you that somebody was railing against me the other day for posting too much Donald Trump stuff and that I was actually helping him as opposed to hurting him. Uh, I don't buy into that at all. Number one. Number two, I continue to shake an angry fist uh, verbally at those that follow me and uh, are on my Facebook page. And I will continue to do it because we need to educate people as to the truth. And I do believe that he, uh, Donald Trump has pissed off the media enough from Tuesday. And as you said yesterday about the ink and the paper, um, he did the wrong thing. Well, I mean, it, excuse me. Dan Rather, actually, uh, right before I came on the show, uh, Dan Rather posted on Facebook. I've also put that on our on our on our Facebook page. I, I shared it. Um, and I mean, what he says in the very first paragraph. Oh, great. Is, Someone's felt, cutting the grass. Go ahead. I felt a shudder down my spine yesterday watching Donald Trump's fusilade, fusilade against the press. This is not a moment to be trifled with. It wasn't his first tirade and it won't be his last. And he goes into uh, about a five or six paragraph, um, you know, uh, commentary on Trump's attacking the press and um and this is this is what he what he says um good journalism the kind that matters requires reporters who won't back up back down back away or turn around when faced with efforts to intimidate them it also requires owners and other bosses with guts who stand by and for their reporters when the heat is on um you know he also makes uh uh a very good commentary on, you know, this has happened before. Um, politicians have um, have attacked the press in the past. But the difference here is, is that there is uh, there's an undertone of violence, right, that um, that that he's tapping into that this is not just, 
you know, the the press uh, are misleading. This is the press needs to be stopped and you need to stop them for me. And this is where it's getting kind of scary. Well, yeah, it is. It is getting uh, more than kind of scary. Before we get in and we've got a considerable, excuse me, a considerable amount of audio uh, to get to. And we want to get to a lot of it, um, if not all of it. Uh, but it, it, it seems to me that uh, with the opening of the uh, Trump U lawsuit uh, papers, um, people coming out of the woodwork, including Eric Schneiderman, the attorney general of the state of New York, uh, those that had taken classes for Trump from Trump University that aren't so ashamed that they're willing to go public. And, and listen, there are a lot of people that are so ashamed by the money they put into that. Uh, that they would never go public. Let's be honest about that. For every person that will, there are probably, I don't know, three to 5,000 people that wouldn't. And we could go on and on and on. But the reality is, uh, and, and the charitable donations, uh, now we're finding out that uh, a, a lot of the veterans organizations that he gave to you are shady, uh, that they spend uh, a considerable amount of the donations on telemarketing and administrative fees. And in fact, one of them is a a Michigan-based veterans group, Z, uh, that is literally, literally three minutes from where I'm sitting right now. Three minutes from where I'm sitting right now. And uh, they were just fined by the state of Minnesota uh, for using uh, over uh, 75% of the money they raise on a telemarketing campaign. For, <laughs> for more money. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, that's what they do is they hire these telemarketing firms to call you and say, hi, I'm with the Disabled American Veterans, uh, which is right. a very legitimate organization, by the way. And I understand that they have to get a phone banking company involved, but uh, really 75, 80% of the money goes to that. And then the you know ninety percent of the rest of that goes to administrative, and then ten percent of what's left over may help a veteran. I don't know. Wipe his butt. Yeah, it's beautiful. And I mean, you know, uh, tr- th- this whole fiasco with Trump. I mean, this is exactly what I wrote about in in my article on Huff Post today. Um, and you know that you know where's where's the money going? And and the the shock and awe from Trump that he's even being asked his question by reporters is what really is kind of weird and and um, and creepy, right? That that he thinks he's beyond reproach. Um, r- real real quick, because uh, I'm I'm assuming that we're going to be talking about this. <laughs> so the title of the article is Donald Trump thinks he's running for supreme leader. Dash, he's in for a surprise. And let me just read real quickly um, just two paragraphs here, because this is this is kind of what we're talking about. Right. Is so at the time Trump had proclaimed we just cracked six million, six million later. Trump's campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski, said the fundraiser actually netted about four point five million or 75 percent of the total that Trump had announced. Last week, after being questioned about the funds, the campaign announced that they had dispersed 5.6 million to various groups. So here's the thing, Tony. It goes from 6 million, then back to 4.5 million, then up to 5.6 million. And he's surprised that reporters are going, hey, so what happened? Yeah, well, right? Like, like, what? How dare you question me? I mean, do you know how this makes me look? Yeah, and, and, and that really is the stunning um, – that really is the stunning revelation for me is that, you know, he's always doubled down on his comments. But, you know, to, to continue to berate the media for telling the truth, to continue to berate the media for doing what it is they do and doing it better now all of a sudden – and doing it accurately now all of a sudden, and not giving him the free pass that they shouldn't have been giving him all along anyway, well, it just makes you wonder uh, where this is headed. Now, let, let's go back to 
the interview on Morning Joe this morning with Eric Schneiderman. Uh, Schneiderman. Eric Schneiderman is the Attorney General in the state of New York. And, and Z, help me out a little bit here. Uh, this isn't about the Trump University case, is it? I'm trying to remember. I think I think. It All is, right. Yeah, yeah I, it's just I have read and posted so much stuff this morning that it, I'm, I'm my brain is already turning to oatmeal a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is really damning. I, what what Eric Cin- Schneider cinnamon, cinnamon raisin oatmeal. Uh, uh, well, I had an, uh, an egg and cheese breakfast sandwich that I made myself, by the way. Well, but you said your brain was turning to oatmeal. Oh, so gotcha. I just wanted to. Uh, I just wanted to make sure we clarified what kind. Um, yeah, that wouldn't have been my my choice, uh, but that but that's okay. <laughs> um, w- with that said, let's listen to what uh, Eric Schneiderman had to say on the Morning Joe show this morning. A lot of this looks slimy and sleazy to a lot of people, bilking people out of money, making false promises. But what is the specific crime as you see it? It's fraud. I mean, this is a straight up fraud. It's like selling people uh, something you say is a Mercedes and it turns out to be a Volkswagen. And even if some people say, well, I actually kind of like the Volkswagen, it's still fraud because it's not a Mercedes. This was not a university. And in New York, we are a little sensitive. You can't just put up a sign saying Scarborough Hospital, Scarborough University, Scarborough Law Firm. I told him that. He did not listen to me. it's, It's not a university. Trump's role was really as the pitchman. And we've got his videotapes, and we've got his sworn testimony, which undercuts every statement in the videotapes. He said, my hand-picked experts will teach you my personal secrets. He and the president of the university have already testified under oath. He never met the instructors. They weren't hand-picked. They weren't experts. Some of them came out of fast food and retail. And he had nothing to do with the, the secrets, supposed secrets <clears throat> that were taught, because he had nothing to do with the curriculum. So people were led to believe they were getting the personal secrets of Trump during hard economic times. We're talking about 2008, 2009, 2010. People wanted to scramble to find a way to make money. He duped them in. Thousands of people paid millions of dollars. And we're out to get them their money back. There you go. Now, here's the thing, Tony, is that this could potentially bankrupt uh, Trump. I mean, this could really hurt him if this case not only goes to trial, but uh, Schneiderman wins. All right. And, and so, first of all, let me apologize a little bit for the audio, but it's all we could get, and it's what it was. So it wasn't... I'll fix it. Yeah. I'll fix it. Well, whatever. Um, at the time, that's all we could get, and it's all there was, and it wasn't that bad. Uh, but it, it was a little scratchy, obviously. Um, you know, I, let's let, do me a favor. Um, I want to do this a little differently. Let's go with both of the Mark Cuban audio pieces because it actually, uh, maybe number two would be, or B would be the best one to start with because it really deals with how much money Donald Trump may really have. You and Donald Trump, Mark. Mark. Not even close, I do. Not even close. And and, and by the way, take some of that money and go get Mike Conley. So next year, (laughs) Cube, when we're talking about, instead of Golden State Cleveland, we're talking about Dallas and Cleveland. Hey, you're mouthy guys here. But before before all the Trumpians jump on me on who has more money, the reason I know is you can't, Donald had to, when you file your federal election campaign um, reports, you have to list all your cash and liquid securities and bonds. You have to list them one by one. So we know without any question that as of May 27th, Donald doesn't have more than $165 million in cash and securities um, and bonds. And I, trust me, I got a lot more than that in cash, securities and bonds. And so, you know, I'm, I'm willing to bet dimes against dollars that that's pretty much what he's got. Do you have bigger hands than Donald Trump? <laughs> I, I don't know. He doesn't shake hands, right? He doesn't, I've got a fist so I couldn't tell you. So 165 million? Um, yeah. Now, now that's still a lot yeah. of money. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's still a lot of money. A lot of more money than I'll ever know. Uh, but it's certainly not 10 billion plus. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing, right? Is his minions aren't going to care, uh, but the rest of us do. Yeah. Let me uh, let me ask you a question about Deutsche Bank. Uh, you posted a story. Uh, all over social media yesterday that was uh, shared a lot, liked a lot, and tweeted a lot. Donald Trump will be the only president, if elected, in the history of this country not to have great wealth, 
but to be indebted in a way and encumbered in a way that could affect policy. Yeah, could actually, uh, yeah, could very much uh, affect policy. And I think he also has some debt with foreign banks, uh, which, you know, again, big conflict of interest, right? Um, big, well, Deutsche Bank for one, but huge, huge, I, I don't remember the number um, of, of how much he's in debt. Uh, but, I mean, think about that, right? So we have a president... Right, that owes foreign banks and uh, national banks uh, a tremendous amount of money and could be in charge um, or responsible for signing or vetoing bills that would keep Wall Street and banks in check. So how do we think that's going to work? Great question. And, and what's really interesting about that article Uh, for those that actually read beyond the second paragraph, was the dysfunctional relationship between Deutsche Bank and Donald Trump. Uh, In 2008, at one point, Trump owed uh, and was late on, I believe, 280, might have been, I think, $680 million. Doesn't matter. It was a Mm -hmm. huge sum of money. And they got into a pissing match. They ended up in court, etc. Now, we, we, we need to say Deutsche Bank is not a good neighbor. Uh, they're not a good neighbor. Uh, they are uh, manipulative. Uh, they are brilliant at what they do. And they have paid billions of dollars in fines for ripping off people globally through an interest rate scam. With, with all that said, and beyond. With all that said, Donald Trump has this really dysfunctional relationship with them. They end up in court, et cetera, et cetera. Then they turn around and loan him even more money. I mean, a disgusting amount of money for another project. Now, I don't know about you, but if I piss off my bank, it's over. Yeah. Well, and also Deutsche Bank was notorious during the foreclosure crisis for foreclosing on homes they didn't even own. So they they were they were foreclosing on homes that the mortgage was held by other banks like Bank of America for example or whatever. They were going in foreclosing on these homes, throwing the homeowners out and the homeowners had absolutely no recourse because by the time all was said and done, uh, someone else had already bought the home and moved in. And Deutsche Bank had reaped the profits. So that's who Donald Trump is doing business with. Then he has this ongoing feud with them. And as we learned yesterday, both you and I uh, separately uh, posted this was there are, you know, USA Today did a great piece that there are 3,500 lawsuits involving the Trump organization or Donald Trump personally over the last three decades, 3,500. And uh, I think that right now there are active 50. Some of them are people suing either the Trump organization or Donald Trump. Some are the other way around. But does that not affect his ability to run a country? I realize that at some point, uh, he's going to have to give up all control of everything he owns. Now, think about that freaking narcissistic asshat giving up total control. Is it going to go to Ivanka right. and Eric? You, you know, and, and I don't know. And then I, you know, let me just give you a quick laugh. I, I read an article the other day that I did not post, that I did not share with you because I just thought it was absurd that uh, Ivanka Trump would be a good vice presidential candidate. <laughs> what is this, House of Cards? Right? I mean, really? Well, the reasoning is she would know how to deal with them. And so people uh, might find great comfort in that. And I, I, so he does, I throw up in my mouth He a doesn't bit. need a VP. He doesn't need a VP. He needs a he handler. He needs a handler. That's basically I, that's what they're exactly saying. That's exactly what I was thinking. So, so... Right? We, anyway, it, it, go, go ahead. It's, this is just insane. Well, no, I just, I just, uh, the the Deutsche Bank has lent him two hundred ninety five million. Um, he also has something like three hundred thirty five million 
uh, amongst uh, with 16 loans from 11 different banks and Deutsche Bank apparently his favorite. Uh, and uh, you're right; they're they're one of the sleaziest banks out there, at least from what I saw during the um, during the financial crisis. There's a um, there's an organization here in Boston um, that has basically dedicated their entire uh, staff and protesting campaigns uh, against Deutsche Bank and um, and their their practices in foreclosure. And every year, Deutsche Bank has a golf tournament, and every year, um, the organization is out in front of uh, the hotel that is hosting them, uh, protesting. I thought you were going to say every so, year it was at a Trump golf course, but uh, well, it it may very well be. the The other thing is that's important to mention when we go back to Eric Schneiderman. So let's say that all Trump really has is that hundred and sixty five million. Um, some of the plaintiffs in uh, in the New York State's case against Trump for fraud, and Eric Schneiderman made it very clear, and Eric Schneiderman was probably one of the best AGs, most vocal and most active during the foreclosure and financial crisis of going after these big banks for foreclosure. Uh, in the case of fraud, uh, the damages, it's treble damages. So you get back triple what you were ripped off. And a lot of the people that are that are coming forward, uh, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars that they, they, they claim to have been ripped off. And Trump's organization actually targeted single parents with children, um, basically like, a, like any kind of fraud too, said, hey, listen, if you really want to make money, you're going to have to put money in. And bilk them out of ten thousand, twenty thousand, some thirty-five thousand. So imagine that um, you know over hundreds of these people that were that were allegedly uh, scammed out of these tens of thousands of dollars. They would re- they would receive from Donald Trump triple the amount that they were they were uh, bilked out of. And um, you know if all he's got is one hundred and sixty-five million in the bank, it could um, it could hurt him. All right, let's uh, go to the other Mark Cuban um, piece of audio, and and then uh, we'll come back to our discussion on Donald Trump. Um, t- Tony, I, I want to bring up one really quick point on on the Schneiderman case because this, I'm speculating that he's going to be attacked not only for being a Democrat but also being a Jew, uh, and that this is just to take Donald Trump down during his presidential candidacy. Uh, this case started in 2013. Well, and just so people um, know, the, there was part of the audio that we didn't share where Schneiderman said uh, Donald Trump has attacked him personally. Right. And and this, this started in 2013 before Trump even was speculating about running. So these cases take a long time. This has nothing to do with the election. It's timely, no doubt. Uh, it's coincidental that it's happening now. And it could... It's actually not the case is not going to be heard until after the election. And there's really nothing they can do about that. And I and I would guess that they're not going to push to do it so that it doesn't look like they're going after him politically. Uh, But this has been in the works since 2013. So this is not something that just came up because Donald Trump is running for president. I want to make that very, very clear. All right. Uh, Mark Cuban again on uh, W.A.B.C. And Ron will tell me every time he comes on the program that don't confuse wealth with a good businessman. He does not believe that Donald Trump is a great businessman on the same plateau as you or Warren Buffett or any of those guys, yet he's made tons of money. Do you agree with Ron? You could be very wealthy and successful in business, but not necessarily be a great businessman. Well, nobody's great in business at everything, right? And so what I look at, like I try to stick to tech deals because that's what I know. And every now and then I'll delve out into other things that I might think are interesting or there's, there's a good or philanthropic reason to do it. And so I'll, I'll dip my toes like you see it in Shark Tank all the time, right? you know, because they're smaller investments. You know, I'll take a chance in a person. Um, but I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. I'm not so sure Donald knows what he's not good at. So, he, <laughs> what, you know, what he's done well is put his name on big, big buildings, right? Uh, he, he appears to have done well putting his name, you know, through a licensing arrangement on hotels and buildings. And he's, he's good at that. Now, whether or not that's made him a billionaire, I don't know. They, you know, 
he's not transparent enough for us to really know. But there's a lot of things, like a lot of us, where he just is horrible at it. And it, it's interesting because if you look at his FEC file, it's the Federal Election Committee filing. And I was curious because, you, you, you know, you have to list your cash and you have to list all your businesses. And so I was curious to see. And so when you go through the filings, you can see what, you know, the time periods that certain bi- types of businesses were as hot buttons. Like 2007, 2008, he, you know, he, he set up all these companies to license the, the Donald Trump name. And then he got into golf courses and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, in the hotels. And so, you know, I think he's good at real estate. I, I do give him a lot of credit there. I think he's good at branding real estate. I don't think he's very good at brands for non-real estate products. And to me, it, it was more of a reflection of desperation. So when you're putting your name on stakes and you're putting your name on water, you're putting your name on playing cards, you're putting your name on all this nonsense, right? You're not going to make big bucks no matter what, right? It's not like, you know, Trump stakes were going to make him $100 million. It's not like they were going to make him $5 million. So, you know, I asked, and I asked him, I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You know, are you, are you that desperate for money? Like, no. no, think of it this way. Okay. Go ahead, Mark. You do commercial reads for products all the time, right? And there are some products you're just going to say, there's no way I'm going to read this stuff. And he just doesn't have that ability to say no if someone's going to write him a check. And I think that's a huge problem. Okay, so we have Mark Cuban on with Bernie and Sid on WABC. And uh, you're right, Mark. He's not big on details, but it's it's his inks, instincts. His appeal is visceral. Uh, you know, a nation yeah. of suckers no more is what he says. What is wrong with... All right, so there you go. there you go. Mark Mark Cuban is a multi billionaire, legitimately a multi billionaire, um, and you know you'll recall that we had a conversation about him early last week that he said he'd be willing to serve as a VP for either Hillary or Donald. It doesn't sound like he's on Donald's train. Yeah, I I was thinking the exact same thing. It's you know like last week. He was saying, "Oh yeah, no, yeah, I'd, I'd take the VP slot," and um, you know, it doesn't, yeah, you're absolutely right. It doesn't sound like he has a tremendous amount of respect for the guy, does uh, it? No. And you know, yeah. And I also I remember him on Bill Maher and talking about Donald Trump and basically not even basically what he said was, "Yeah, he's like that friend you have that comes to the party and everyone goes, ah, oh, they invited Trump." Yeah. So, you know, again, where's the credibility, really, Tony? I mean, this is the kind of stuff that really kind of gets to me, particularly, I mean, granted, Cuban's not a politician, but we've seen it with the politicians, too. I mean, you've got Marco Rubio that was doing basically a comedy routine, slamming Trump, and now he goes, oh, yeah, no, you know, uh, he has some good things to say, and if, you know, he's going to be our nominee, and I would much prefer him over Hillary, Really? I would prefer someone right out of the phone book over Trump. Well, here, let's go with uh, a defection uh, from the Republican National Committee yesterday, the woman that is in charge of Hispanic outreach and communications, resigned because of Donald Trump yesterday. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, this stuff is happening for a reason. Now, listen, you know, we, we often... And we do. We criticize Fox News. We poke fun at them. You know, their nickname is Faux News, whatever. There's a reason for that. It's not just because they're popular. It's not just because they're the big boy on the block in cable news. It's because they are actually very transparent about what they believe and how they lean. They never discuss it. They never fight the talk that they aren't that. But Sean Hannity, well, Sean Hannity has his own special way of being a complete douche. And uh, you grab some audio that proves that in spades, Z. Yeah, here it is. Here now with reaction to 2016, Republican presumptive nominee Donald Trump. It's not really presumptive. You hit 1237, so you will be the nominee. I want to go into this, though, because... This is not just this story. You said the press should be ashamed of themselves. And yes, if they act like this, it's going to be this way. Explain what you mean. 
Well, they cover me so inaccurately. This was a good example because I raised $5.6 million for the vets, and it was a horrible experience with the press. I mean, they were questioning it. Did he really raise the money? Where is the money? And by the way, of the $5.6 million, I took zero in terms of administrative costs. Some of these people, they raise a million dollars and they take $950,000 for administration. I took zero, not one penny. So I raised $5.6 million. More money's even coming in. And instead of, like, being, you know, treated at least reasonably, uh, it's a whole big deal going on, and they're always saying, who's getting the money? Where's the money going? So today I had a press conference. I gave all the groups. They're great groups. They were so nice, and they wrote me letters, and they called. They couldn't even believe that they got it. So I raised $5.6 million, and I had bad publicity. I mean, can you believe it? I raised $5.6 million for the vets. It's all given out now. And instead of sort of being thanked, I don't have to be thanked, but instead of being thanked or being at least treated nicely by the it, press, you know, I got the worst publicity. I, I, I watch this and I'm thinking, what, what do they think? You need the money? Do they think you're going to steal it? Um, you were going through a process, though, of vetting these groups, which, by the way, is a responsible thing to do, right? You have to because you don't know who the groups are. Number one, you have to vet. Now, most of the money was given out or a lot of it was given out very early almost immediately because the groups have been vetted or I knew the groups or something. But, you know, I gave to many, many different groups. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of 25,000, 100,000, 200,000. One group I gave 1.1 million to. And they're great people and great groups, but you have to vet them. You have to check them out to see, you know, do they exist? Do they have all of the information they need? And it takes a little time. And uh, the publicity I got, honestly, what it does, Sean, is people in my position would say, why should we do this anymore? If we're going to raise money, you know, many millions of dollars for a good group, I mean, great groups, and then we get, we're criticized, it's easier not to do it. If I wouldn't have done it, I was under no obligation to do it. That was during a speech. I said, let's raise some money for the vets. If I didn't say that, nobody would have complained. Instead, I got nothing but bad publicity. Let me... So I felt the best way to handle it would be to hold a news conference and to show everybody where the money went, and I did that. And all of these groups were amazing, and they all got the money, and everybody now, but I guess, is, is happy. But a, this uh, is not an isolated incident. I mean, you went through the New York no. Times front page no. story, printed almost 20 pages about all these women you had supposedly mistreated. It turns out, in every case, it was debunked by the women themselves, and even the one woman that stood by her story... They went story, public. Sean, they went public. They went public on their own. Yeah. I know Carrie Perjan, I called her. Yeah. She came out on her own. Uh, that was one example. But the, the, look at, for example, did you see the Katie Couric piece on, on the gun issue, where they selectively edit in a pause that didn't exist yeah. in the interview? We really, I, I said in 2008, journalism's dead. <laughs> and you helped kill it. Yeah, no kidding. Yes, Sean, I mean, and you're, and you're holding the smoking gun. That's probably the best part right there. I said this a long time ago that journalism's dead. Uh, well, yeah, we've been saying that ever since you came on the air. I mean, can you can you imagine if this was anyone else but Trump, what Fox News would do? Can you imagine if this was um, anyone? Well, if they were performing oral sex on Mitt Romney. Yeah. I mean, and Mitt Romney almost exclusively only appeared on Fox News during the 2010, was it the 10 campaign? Yeah. Uh, no, 12 campaign. Uh, you know, it, so, yeah, I mean, they've, they've got a, a deep and rich history of, uh, of uh, perform, performing fellatio on presidential, Republican presidential candidates on air. Uh, let's next go to the billow. I mean, what? What? But hold, hold on, just a minute, because here's the thing, right? Sean Hannity's sitting there going, "What do they think that you you kept the money or that?" No, they they they're doing their job. The journalists are doing their job. Hey, you claim that you had six million dollars. Where'd it go? You know, whether that's like the question is based on we think you took it, or uh, we'd like to write a nice story about it, and you know find out where this money went so you know we can name the charities that you vetted supposedly which actually never happened i mean trump has like six people working on this and it was there was no vetting going on in fact there was a reporter at tmz that called uh about 80 percent 
of these uh, these charities, and they had they received a check, but they had never heard from anyone in in the Trump campaign uh, interview them or question them or or anything. So, I mean, you know, yeah, this is this is what we need to know. This is the stuff we need to know, and that Hannity is completely beside himself as to why journalists would be asking this question is beyond ridiculous. All right. Well, let's now go to the Bill O'Reilly audio. And then after that, I want to share with you a conference call that I took a part of as a quote unquote journalist uh, day before yesterday uh, with a uh, former, uh, well, he's a veteran of the U S Marine Corps currently serving in the state Senate in Michigan uh, as well as uh, he was joined uh, as well as uh, by the uh, chairman of the Michigan Democratic Party. Uh, but let's listen to Bill O'Reilly first. And in the impact segment tonight, as you may know, Donald Trump held a, a benefit to raise money for vets after he declined to join a Fox News debate in Iowa last January. Mr. Trump said he raised about six million dollars to the vets in need. But the press has challenged that assessment. Today, Trump said this. I gave $5,600,000. More is coming in, probably tops the $6 million number. The press should be ashamed of themselves. Instead of being like, thank you very much, Mr. Trump, or Trump did a good job, everyone say, who got it, who got it, who got it? And you make me look very bad. I have never received such bad publicity for doing such a good job. Also on the vet front, there's controversy over how the American sniper, Chris Kyle, listed his medals. Joining us from Boston, Fox News military analyst Darren Old David Hunt from Washington, Captain Chuck Nash, also an FNC military analyst. So Trump and the vets, uh, Captain, are you satisfied with his explanation? Yes, I am. And if the press has any more uh, uh, questions, they can go to the individuals that he published, the individual organizations, because he spelled out their names yeah, and the names. dollar list. Yeah, right. Now, why do you think, Colonel Hunt, that uh, this became a controversy? I think, first of all, Trump created it. I'm very glad and thankful that he raised the money. He announced it in January, didn't answer questions, and today should have been, he buried the lead. It should have been, he gave this great amount of money to a great bunch of vets, and everyone's thankful. But he decided to do the attack thing. He buried the lead on this. I think the part of the problem is how it was announced. It, and, and by the way, the way to do this, Bill, and I hate to do this, is the way you give money. People don't understand, you give millions of dollars to charity. I've, I'm involved in a couple of them with you. And you do it, and you quietly go on your business. That's not how this was done. Again, the lead is, thank you for giving money to the vets, but he created his own controversy. But why would you say that when uh, there was no data, Colonel, that said he didn't give the money? It was basically a supposition um, fabricated by anti-Trump people in the press. I mean, there was no data that came out and said... Trump is stiffing the vets. There was no accounting that said that. So why would you be so hard on Trump? Because he did this in January to skip a Fox debate and made the point. Yeah. He's the one that brought this up. He brought I'm it up. I'm going to give six yeah. million bucks. Okay, I'm going to not. He didn't quietly did it. He wanted to make public of it. He wanted he he wanted to use it politically. That's fine. I'm glad the vets believe me. I think it's wonderful that they got the money. But then you've got to sometimes you're running for president of the United States. You got to have to accomplish some stuff. Wouldn't do it. The press kept pushing. And he did it today. I think, but I think the press kept pushing with but, insinuation but he, rather than just an objective. Bill, he buried like the lead to know. today. We I don't, I don't know he, he buried the, buried lead, the lead. I don't oh, think so. Oh, absolutely buried I the lead. I think the lead yeah. of the story is that the press insinuated something that isn't true. No. And today, the, Trump corrected the, the record. The, the I mean, lead maybe of the story he is been some great vets got some money. He might have been more for The lead is guys got money. What? No. The lead is that the vets got money. Yeah, and, and he came deal. out and he, That's and he the said... That's not this other stuff. All right. He said everybody got the money. All right. Let's get over That's to... That's a good uh, thing. I, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how that... I'm, well, here, let me help you out here. Let me help you out here. <laughs> Although you and I are arguing a very different perspective... Because what Colonel Hunt was saying was they're grateful that the money went to the vets. Um, that Donald Trump, you know, basically was called out for, you know, not giving out the money earlier. 
uh, or delaying it, whatever. So they're arguing about the semantics. They're arguing about timing. They're not arguing about the real issues. The real issues is uh, are, are quite clear that most of that money wasn't dispersed until last week. Uh, there still isn't a full accounting of it. As you pointed out, many of these organizations were not vetted, as we told they were, so that's another lie. <clears throat> Some of the uh, veterans organizations that got money, as we talked about earlier, are not on the up and up or on <clears throat> the charity watches F list. They uh, grade charities from A to F. Uh, and we can go on, but they're not arguing th- those realities. Now, let me tell you about this conference call that I was involved with uh, through the, the Democratic National Committee on Tuesday. Uh, State Michigan State Senator David Knizek, who served two tours uh, in Iraq, um, knows a whole lot about the military. And to say that he was offended by Donald Trump's presentation uh, while announcing who got the money would be putting it lightly. Uh, Certainly, uh, Senator Knizek, who is also a uh, former member of the Michigan State House, and I need to be upfront, he's a good friend of mine. I know him quite well. Uh, I I know him quite well. Uh, He's a great young man, and he's got a great political future. Uh, but this is what one of the things he had to say. I don't care what your politics are. The people who serve our country are patriots. And for someone running for president to disparage their service is dis- uh, disgraceful. It's not just this rhetoric that Donald Trump's, un- uh, that, uh, Donald Trump's unqualified to be president. Trump's chief policy advisor indicated he would push to privatize the VA. That's wrongheaded ideologically driven plan that would harm our vets by undermining their ability to get unique care they deserve. And leaders at key veterans group like the American Legion and VFW have made clear stand strongly against privatization. Veterans have put their lives in the line for this country and we owe it to them as a country to provide them with 21st century top of the line health care. Now they're not getting it now and we know that. But to privatize those services just to save money would cost lives, and you and I both know it. And anybody in the military that participates in benefits after their service are grateful for them, but also understand how difficult they are to actually manifest them. And to privatize would only add another layer of grief to people that don't deserve any more grief than they already have, Z. Well, I'm, you know, it it was it was obvious that he he did this uh, to take attention away from the GOP debates that he wasn't attending. Um, He did this as a self-aggrandizing move. Uh, He got questioned on it. And it, they weren't accusations; they were they were questions from the press. That's what that's what the press does. And you know, the fact that he cannot deal with—I'm not talking about not deal with being scrutinized. He can't deal with being asked a question. No, and and, and in fact, when he was uh, asked by that sleazy reporter, "Is this what your press conferences are going to be like if you are elected president?" Yes, yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah, because you guys are all dishonest and uh, and uh, horrible people. I mean, that's can what, you that's imagine what, you know, a president like, of the United States going, "All right, Ellen, you you've been nice to me. You actually write good stuff about me." What your question on on uh, Kim Jong Un? Yeah, <laughs> can you imagine? Yeah, exactly. And actually, there's there's an interesting thing going on. Um, right now in Congress is uh, both Repu- Republicans and Democrats have aligned themselves with uh, a pretty powerful uh, group of lobbyists, uh, Silicon Valley lobbyists, um, along with uh, a surprising number of Republicans are at this very moment working feverishly uh, to create legislation against Internet slap suits. And slap suits are, are basically nuisance lawsuits uh, that, 
you know, people with a lot of money uh, will put into play in order to, you know, basically squash their competition who has less money. And they're, uh, so, so lobbyists from Silicon Valley, along with legislators, are trying to pass legislation to combat these nuisance lawsuits um, that would be against online speech before Donald Trump can become president and would probably veto uh, these bills. Uh, because, you know, as we found out, um, Donald Trump tends to be, uh, let's say, litigious. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice way to put it. Uh, listen, we have one more piece of audio, and, and so we might as well clean up the hour. We've got about nine minutes left, a little under nine minutes left. Uh, but we might as well clean up the audio and uh, go ahead and play the uh, last piece we have on the Trump developer. I'm investigative reporter Nick Penzenstadler, and our project found that Donald Trump and his companies have been involved in about 3,500 legal actions around the country. We've identified about 1,900 where he was the plaintiff and about 1,300 when he was the defendant. Uh, due to the branding value of the Trump organization, he vigorously defends his name and his reputation, while simultaneously distancing himself from projects that go belly up. That was the case with a decades-long uh, dispute over a Fort Lauderdale condo development that was never built and there are plaintiffs trying to get their money back. Donald Trump made his career as a real estate developer. And as he'll very proudly tell anyone, when it's his development, he finishes it. Okay? His whole career was built on this premise. Right? This is what he does for a living. And so when he sold this building, he said, this was my development. I am the developer of this building. Now, that means something. The word develop, it can be used in a lot of different contexts. I mean, uh, I, I, we work with the developer on trying to get a beautiful product built, but we weren't develop we were not the developers. So, so you would disagree with certainly with that sentence being in development? Well, the word developing, it doesn't mean that we're the developer. Our examination found that Trump and his organizations have been involved in about 1,600 cases tied to Trump-connected casinos and recovering gambling debts. He's been involved in hundreds of personal injury cases and more than a hundred tussles with government agencies. Well, we we were we were developing it, but it doesn't mean that we were developing it. That in a developing capacity, it means that we were working with a developer or that we were a developer, but not necessarily the developer. Right. Well, you know, and, and this right. goes back to uh, uh, an article that I posted that I'm sure you saw, not necessarily through me, on a, a, a very, a very expensive development in Azerbaijan. I, I, I always say that wrong. Um, here, let me see if I can get it out. Azerbaijan. Um, I got it wrong. And anyway, you know what I'm talking about. There. I there do. is a five, well, supposed a five-star hotel that is being built. It is called, guess what, Trump Tower. They paid him millions of dollars to put the name on there. So once the, the, the shell of the building was built, and I'll tell this story quickly, they uh, attached a the sign that says Trump Tower, and it is illuminated. There's been no construction activity at that site in two years. Yet the Trump Organization back in the United States is getting millions of dollar millions of dollars a month through a licensing agreement for the name. Even though the development has been killed, there is no plans in the very immediate future to go back to uh, finishing the construction. And even when it's done, they have no tenants or not enough tenants to open it. Yet he and his organization are getting paid every month for that illuminated sign on a shell of a building. Right. Well, because they're the, the developer. How do you like that for foreign <laughs> policy chops? Yeah, not bad, huh? You know, when you're already, how, how do I get? I, 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 you know, I, man, oh, man, it just blows my mind. 
Listen, we, how, do, how, do, how do we get in on we, that? We can't, unfortunately. Listen, we had made a promise. We're going to keep the promise. So I want to ask you a question. You, I, I know you've been uh, seeing and, and perhaps even following this uh, tragic case of the, uh, the uh, silverback uh, uh, chimpanzee that was uh, killed at the Cincinnati Zoo uh, because a three-year-old uh, fell into its habitat. A lot of controversies surrounding that. I'm just, just going to give you my opinion and then ask for you, yours before we wrap it up today. Um, I don't believe they had any choice but to euthanize that animal. Uh, could they have done a sedation dart? I think there was a decision made at some level not to do that, and I'm not quite sure why. Uh, I think part of it was... Uh, at least initially, it could have actually harmed the child. This chimpanzee could have squeezed it because at that point it was holding him uh, at different points in the process. And I think they did the right thing. Is it tragic? Absolutely. Um, does it uh, deserve some scrutiny? It absolutely does. Do we need uh, better safeguards at zoos? Clearly, that's true. But I do believe the right decision was made. I, I, and, I, and if you haven't been following that story or not aware of it, I apologize, Z. No, I, I have been. In fact, uh, there was a meme, uh, uh, a viral post on Facebook from, um, I can't remember her last name, but uh, her first name is Amanda, who uh, worked in zoos and had watched the video several times. And uh, was familiar with, uh, with with silverback gorillas, and said that every everything that that uh, that gorilla was displaying um, was uh, aggressive, right? This was not protecting the child. This was basically playing with your lunch, right? And uh, that there was a very good chance that 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 kid could have been ripped apart. Now, the other problem is, too, is that sedation, um, one, you'd freak out because you don't just like shoot a dart into something and it falls down, right? There's there's some time. And had it been freaked out, it could have killed the kid. It could have fallen on it. Um, it could have drowned the child, uh, whatever. This was this was the only choice that, that, that they had. Now, that said, um, the, the girl whose uh, Facebook post went viral happens to be a Facebook friend um, of my, my wife, uh, because they're, they're photographers and, um, and this is, you know, she's gotten hate mail. She's gotten threats from like PETA people. And this was, this is a hard decision for, uh, the people at the zoo to make, and they made the right decision. And in a lot of people's assessment, this was the right decision to make. Now, you know, the, the kids' parents are apparently being investigated also, which, you know, which this kind of gets me too, right? There are 1.7 million kids uh, shot by people that own guns in their homes uh, by those guns, and that's never investigated. But, you know, a kid gets killed by, or, uh, you know, a gorilla gets killed, and the whole world goes absolutely berserk. They just go, ape. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Not funny. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure that we kept our promise that at least one item would be non-election related and or political. And, and that is our item of the day. Uh, very quickly, one more time, Richard Zombeck, to send money to rate us on iTunes, uh, the different delivery systems, where our website is, how to contact us, all that happy stuff. How do we do that? T and Z talk.com and you can get all the information and you can find out how to support us. That is very important. Uh, if you can uh, go to TNZ talk.com, click on support and find out how to support us. There are links all over the place on how to do that. And of course, contacting us with our contact form or our phone number. Um, again, that's T and Z talk. .com. You know, I, I'm, just thought of something, and I hope it actually happens, that TMZ sues us to change the name because it's too similar. That would be, that great. Would be great. I, you know, <laughs> I keep on using Donald Trump's Twitter handle when I post about him because I want to piss him off and have him mention me. Um, it hasn't yeah. happened yet, but I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. Anyway. Yeah. Well, we'll be mentioned as hacks and lowlifes and lightweights and, you know, Basically everything that 
would get us the attention we want. Elementary Absolutely. School. <laughs> um, in the meantime, tomorrow, folks, uh, on our Friday podcast, we're going to talk about uh, President Obama's trip to Elkhart, Indiana. And there's a specific uh, and very important reason why we're going to do that. And if you want to know what it is, well, you're going to have to listen. For Richard Zombeck, I am Tony Truppiano. I ask all of you to have a great day. And as always, we ask that you be well. Oh, yeah. Can you feel it? Just over the credits, just riffing now. Words and chords. Not the poetry and the real thing, but not bad for an ad lib. Not good, but... And it's not long enough, so just do a little bit more. And that's nearly done. That's the final credit there. That's the end.